What's up everybody? Welcome back to Learning the Reef. I want to quickly thank everybody that has subscribed to this channel so far. It really means a lot. So let's just go ahead and get started on what we're going to be doing today. So a few days ago I went ahead and put the final touches on the Aquascape and as you can see here it took a little bit of work, little things that I had to do here and there, but I think I finally came up with something that I really, really like. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. So I'm going to give you a couple views here. This is from the front. I think it looks really good from this angle. So now we're moving to the side. And you can see from this side. I went ahead and added a little rubble so that basically it connects the aquascape to the back, but it doesn't really connect. My thought process on that was if the zoanthids were to get too close to the back glass, I can remove that rubble pretty easily so that they don't, you know, start growing on the back glass. I do not want zoanthids on the back glass. That's going to make moving the tank and that kind of stuff a lot harder because I don't want to be messing with zoanthids too much. So let's move over to the other side and see what it looks like from the kitchen side. This angle right here, I really like. And then you've got this angle here, which I think, you know, my previous aquascape, this side, it was really lacking some interest. But what I've done is I've added this big rock right here. I've added a rock back here. And then all of this back here that connects, that's all rubble. So we've got this big main aquascape rock there. That's all glued together. And then you got the rubble on the back that completes it. So I am really happy about this scape. I've been looking at it for a few days. I don't think there's really any way I can add to it at this point. And I wanted a pretty large, not too large, but a large enough aquascape that it fills up the water box because zoanthids, they don't grow up. They just kind of encrust, right? So I don't need to leave a lot of room for coral up here. So go ahead and let me know what you think about this aquascape in the comments down below. I'm really happy with this scape, but I do know beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So if it's not your cup of tea, let me know in the comments down below. I won't be offended. But if you like it, again, let me know. I'm, I'm curious to see what you guys think how you would have done something different, and yeah, so go ahead and leave a comment. So now that we're done with escape, we can start taking steps to getting some water in this tank, and we're definitely gonna be doing that today, so I'm really excited. Let's go take a look at what we have and how we're gonna go about doing that. So first, let's talk a little about the filtration back here. Now, I am gonna probably go a little more in depth on the filtration, probably in another video, but let's just take a look at what we have going on right now and remember that everything's a work in progress. This is the filter sock chamber so the water is going to first overflow into here into the filter sock and then in the filter sock I did add just a little bit of carbon. You can see that down there. It actually came with the tank. I'm going to start using my own carbon and GFO once the tank is up and running and I'll still be putting it in the filter sock because I think that's probably the best place to put it for a nano tank like this. Now we have the second chamber and down here what I have for now, this is all going to change. For now what I have is there's two filter sponges like this. These came with the tank and then below that we've got a few of these bio balls and again these came with the tank. Ultimately these bio balls I'm not going to be using in this system but I want to start them out in the system because I want to cycle them. I'm going to be using these in my quarantine tank as biofiltration, so I want to make sure they are nice and cycled. So this whole middle chamber is probably going to change. What I'm going to be doing and what I want to really do is to set up a small refugium in here and also add some marine pure bio pellets. So that'll be my plan for biological filtration. It's going to be a small refugium and some marine pure blocks as well as obviously the live rock itself is biological filtration as well. I do have a little heater down here. We'll go more in depth on what heater I'm using in this tank in a little bit and that is the pump chamber right there. 
The auto top off sensor, which I don't have yet, is gonna go in this pump chamber. The pump I have is the one that just came with this tank. So this is what I'm using to start the tank. This is the live sand I'm using. It's Carib C Araga Live Fiji Pink live sand. The salt I'm using for the water is just plain old instant ocean. It's tried and true, works really well. Lots of people use it and love it, and it's not very expensive. I'm gonna be starting this tank with Instant Ocean Biospira. This is essentially live nitrifying bacteria. It seeds the tank with the bacteria that you want for the cycle, so it allows you to add fish basically right away. Now, that being said, I don't believe a tank is fully cycled when you put this in, but it's safe for fish. The nitrogen cycle is working, but it takes time for a tank to fully mature and be fully cycled in my personal opinion. We've got just a cheap little 50 watt cascade heater. I will be using a temperature controller. I wanna remind everybody everything I'm using for this tank build, all of the information for that as well as links are gonna be in the description below. So if you have any questions on what I'm using, check the description of this video. Now let's go ahead and go upstairs and let me show you the RO system I have and I've already gone ahead and made 15 gallons of RO water. Let me go ahead and show you. All right guys, so we're in my guest bathroom and underneath the guest bathroom sink, we have a bulk reef supply four stage RO system. I've actually converted this from a regular RO drinking water system to a RODI system, four stage. So I already had an RO system, so I just converted it, um, but it does work pretty well. I have a triple TDS meter I do get zero TDS out the blue line right there. I basically just run the blue line and the black line out of here and into the buckets, which I fill in my tub because obviously if they overflow, they're not gonna flood anything and that's basically it. So I've got 15 gallons of RO water right there. So I do kinda wanna show you how I have this hooked up, but I'll go more in depth probably on my RO system if you guys want in another video. But this is right here, this is just the cold water supply line supplying the sink and it's PEX. So I got two shark bite fittings along with a valve here for RO tubing that I got from Bulk Reef Supply and I just plumbed it in like that. So if I ever want to turn this on, all I have to do is come down here, turn on this valve right here. Obviously I have to run these lines into the tub and I'm making water. All right guys, so I'm gonna start mixing up the water. I'm gonna make 15 gallons. Even though it's a 10 gallon tank, I think the entire system volume is 11 gallons, but we have rock and stuff in there, so it's probably more like 10. And I just wanna make some extra as well. So that's what we're gonna do. If you've never done this before, you've never had a saltwater aquarium before, I totally recommend making your own water. It's, it's really easy. It's not hard to set up an RO system, it's not very expensive, and you're gonna save money in the long run, and you're not gonna be dependent on your local fish store to be constantly going to them to get RO water as well as salt water. It's just annoying. It's a lot nicer to be able to do it at home and to be able to do it yourself. So the instructions for mixing are gonna be on your salt box or your salt bag for Instant Ocean. It's a half cup, which is what I have here, half cup for every for every gallon. So since these are five gallons, we're gonna do five scoops. I'm gonna let this sit, let it dissolve, and we're gonna put some sand in the tank right now. We're gonna put the live sand in. So let's go ahead and do that. I like to put the live sand in before I put water in. Um, this way it gives me a chance to kind of move it around, get it where I want it and it's a lot easier to do that when there's no water in the tank. So, with live sand like this, you do not have to rinse it, so it just goes straight in. Alrighty, I think that is spread out enough. Let's start adding water.
So as you can see, the tank is up and running and I'm very happy with the way it's turning out. I think it looks pretty dang good. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Now I've already started acclimating some fish and I've already started adding some more equipment. So all that's gonna be in the next video. So stay tuned for that. But as always, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, leave a comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell if you wanna know each and every time I upload a video. See you guys.